it's named Red Creek because of the red clay over which it flows. It uh, has clay shelves in its course. If you cross those clay shelves in a canoe in sunlight, then it's, it's like going through a red tunnel. On Red Creek, you can find uh, deer, turkey, squirrels, armadillos, just all kind of wildlife. It's just just a blessing to have a place like that and uh, emotionally stabilizing. I mean, you just at peace when you're on the creek, just shut out everything else. This is where we are right here. Yeah, that's right. And this is, uh, this should be the bluff. The way the lay of that land is, I think it's gonna be in there. All right, let's go find the bluff. The timber industry began in South Mississippi in about 1840 and continued to they cut it over, cut over the land in 1915. The creek was a highway to take the timber to the Pascagoula River. It was like a cattle drive. I can imagine what it was like when they were in the midst of a log drive. The creek, if you've ever seen it in full flood, is an awesome thing. And if you see that, when it is that engorged, you will have no trouble of thinking of 40,000 saw logs balling and bumping its way down through there on the way to the Pascagoula River. Well, it should be around here somewhere, Jeremy. Let's find north on the map. This is north this direction. Well, according to what we were thinking, it should be in, in this area somewhere. On this side of the creek. Somewhere over here. I'm not sure. Hey, guys. Let's go see if we can find it. Watch his limbs. Well, looks like Red Bluff's not a legend after all. Yep. Yeah. 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 You're right. 
Maybe we should keep it a secret. Yeah. yeah. All to ourselves. And this this bluff, best of my knowledge, was about probably 20, 25 feet, or maybe 30. It was tall. And uh, you could stand on top of that bluff, and the creek was right at the bottom of it. It was in a big bend. We used to, that's the first thing that would come in the sight when you're coming down the creek was that big, tall, red bluff. Here. Well, this is erosion. You see where they cut this road in? Yeah. It's been washing it out. If there was a trail or an area that had been completely cleared to lead to a high bluff, like over um, a Red Creek, over a period of time, you can have large ditches to be farmed and later on gully and may even a cut through through the creek itself to another part of the Red Creek, not only do you erode that high bluff, but you also erode all the terrain around it and get rid of some of our endangered species of plants and animals and things of that nature. There are many mysteries in this world, but one of them is this. Why did the state of Mississippi levy an ad valorem tax on standing timber and encourage the logging uh, companies to cut them all? I, I really don't know the answer to that, but I know that it happened. It, it was so wasteful, and yet that is what they did. When that railroad came through, then that railroad radiated dummy lines out into the forest and opened up the entire forest to the Sawyer's Blade, and they cut the whole thing down. Some other things that hurts our, our growth of our timber out there is our invasive species. Kogan grass is something now that's getting real heavy in different places all over the state of Mississippi. It's going to slow down the, the water flow because it's so thick. It's got such a deep root system. We don't like it in our forests or our creeks and our streams and so forth. We've taken so many things like our creeks and our streams for granted and they are out there. They're going to flow anyway without us, but that's not so. We need to take care of these things. We need to keep the trash out of them. We need to advise the people that go there to protect it and, and spread the word that it's a good thing for this community to, to have streams like this around. Where there's been a lot of ATVs and off-road vehicles, there's been a tremendous change in our waterways. One reason is because of the fact that probably a lot of the wheels that are in those creeks disturb the fish beds, disturb the microinvertebrates that might be in that water, and kill many of them, and disallow some of the eggs to be formed, and things of this nature. A watershed is a protected layer of water in which the tributaries and other water bodies empty into a certain body of water. We have Red Creek watershed, Red Creek and Black Creek empty into the Paspagula River. When I was young, well, up, up until in the 1950s, the creek run deep and had sharp bends. And, uh, but now it's filled in with sand and not very deep. I tend to blame it on the clear cutting of the timber and disturbing the land and all of the sand washing in the creek and filling it up. I think conservation is very important and I really think that you should have a buffer zone and that buffer zone should be inclusive of the creeks and tributaries that lead to the creek.
And I think it's important that they recognize that everything in life is there for a purpose. And it's for you to be able to appreciate whatever purpose that might be. And of course, always remember that there's a reason for every creature that is here on this earth. Yeah, I've, I've been to Red Bluff. I grew up going to Red Bluff, and uh, and I wish everybody could see it, but I'm not going to divulge the location of it. So all I can tell you is it's on Red Creek. If there was a Red Bluff, we could not find it. For me, I, I think Red Bluff is just a legend out there. I'm not sure. I hadn't been there to it, so I don't know. <laughs> If you told me Red Bluff does exist, I would believe you because a lot of other people have told me that in the last 40 years, but all I'm saying is I've floated Red Creek and I've not ever seen it. <laughs>